Okay, we are live. Hi, how are you? Hi, James and Eileen Cohen. How are you? Fine, thank you. Very well, thank you. Yeah, so now what we heard uh, is one of Jim's uh, symphonic work, um, number eight, the first it, movement. Yes. It was yes. the opening movement. Opening movement. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, so let me, first of all, even you guys, a lot of our audience knows who James Cohen is. I'm still going to read a short version of uh, Jim's uh, biography. James Cohen was born in 1928 in Newark, New Jersey. He attended the Julia School of Music, graduating with two degrees in composition. He has written solo, chamber, choral, orchestral works. His catalog includes string quartets, piano sonatas, and symphonies. He was awarded a Queen Elizabeth of Belgium Prize for his Symphony No. 2 and AIDEM Prize for his symphony number four. Paul Parry and the Detroit Symphony introduced his symphony number three and variation on the Wang Fari Stranger. His opera, The Fall of the City, won an Ohio University Opera Award. His music has been performed at the Library of Congress and the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. Um, Jim's uh, rest of the biography is in the description below, so make sure you read the rest. And also, um, Jim has a really handsome website, which is also included in the um, description. Great. Thank you so much for being with me, uh, James and Eileen. Um, now, Eileen, you are the biggest fan and supporter <laughs> of Jim's music. And so I will just start to ask you a question. Um, now, um, do you always um, uh, enjoy classical music? Like before you met Jim, uh, do do you are you very fond of classical music? Ching, it was the only music that I did love growing up as a, a young child. Music was in my parents' home, and I loved it. And when I went to school in those years, many years ago, they had um, music appreciation classes, and I was the only one who knew everything about every selection they were playing. And music has sustained me. Uh, I will tell the audience that uh, I was widowed at a very young age. Um, and music, if it hadn't been for classical music, I don't know how my life would have been. But it sustained me. And then five and a half years later, God gave me this wonderful man. So uh, it, it was a blessing for me. Beautiful. So Jim, how are you? Tell, tell us how, how did you meet um, Eileen and <laughs> when? <laughs> In 19... It was 1979. 1979. And um, 
I met her because um, there was a, a, a little complimentary um, newspaper. newspaper that was left in the lobbies of, of restaurants and hotels called the Sewing Post. And the Sewing Post had all kinds of things in there, including um, gentlemen would give you lessons in the French language in 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 return, in, in return for a a a, a guitar a, a, a used guitar in good condition and everything he would be willing you get you give him the french the guitar and he will teach you how to speak french so that was one it was a form of a barter system and um personals, personals and so forth um I grew up in Newark, New Jersey. My mother was my first music teacher. I had an older brother named William. Now the difference between myself and William is that William always gravitated towards jazz and I always graduated towards symphonic music. But of course the common denominator between the two of them are so close. They both contain melody they both have an assortment of different kinds of musical instruments. And uh, my brother loved the, the clarinet and saxophone. And uh, I was much more interested in, in the violin and the viola. Yes, speaking of viola, um, <clears throat> I'm a violist. And I noticed on your website, um, it's very interesting. You used a uh, auto cleft to uh, sort of divide sections of your website. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'll yes. show it to you. <laughs> and there is a reason for that. Yeah, tell me. <laughs> the viola is the ancestor of the entire violin family. First of all, there was only the viola. Then they wanted something that would play higher, so they, they entered in Italian, the violino, which simply means a little viola. Uh -huh. Then they needed something which would play really far down. Yeah. And it was a big instrument, which we now call the bull fiddle. Yeah. Uh, it means a big viola. They, in <laughs> Italian, they're just the violone. Uh -huh. Then they needed something which was higher the, than the bull fiddle. Yeah. But not as high as the viola, so they this. so they call, they called it a violoncello, mm -hmm. which no means which be means a little big I'm viola. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, that, so the whole ancestry mm -hmm. of the stringed instruments is that, and in terms of music, everything else came after that. The mm -hmm. wind instruments came oh, there that. afterwards. Um, but every once in a while, the people bowing had to stop and rest their arms. So at that point, people would come in and play things like, which um, the, the 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 flute and the oboe, etc. So this was a a, a slow, gradual, uh, pragmatic uh, filling in of all of the instruments of the orchestra. Yes, yes. And I love your viola sonata, um, which we're going to hear. Um, how about we hear some now? Um, I was showing um, Eileen, I was showing people uh, Jim's website with the auto cliff in oh. the middle. So that's what you you were wondering if anything went wrong. Yeah, no, I think I, that we lost no. you. No, I was just sharing and then I can hear you and I can hear, um, yeah, us. So, okay. Yeah. Let me see. Um, let's go to, um, your viola piece. Okay. So I need to get out of here. And so, yeah, well, 
Okay, so let me find your. So tell me a little bit. Of, I'm I'm just looking for the music right now. Looking for you. So tell me a little bit about your family, uh, Jim. Um, are your parents musicians? My mother uh, was a, a pianist. My father was not a musician of any sort. Mm -hmm. He was in the dairy business. Hmm. He had a company in Newark, New Jersey called the Newark Milk Company, which involved not only milk, but milk products. Um, so he, it included the uh, making cheese and ice cream mm. and everything in between. Mm. And my father was not a musician, but he was very, very practical and pragmatic about everything. Mm. My brother had no patience for classical music, but he loved jazz and so he he picked up the the clarinet, mm. and he was very good at it. Wow! So, at what point um, uh, you were instrumentalist first, um, and then become a composer? How how does that sort of a how how did you become a composer? by listening to the great composers. They, they were a magnet to me. Um, the, the piano sonatas of Beethoven, for example. An example, the opening of the one called the Balstein Sonata, which it's, it starts basically like a, a C major chord, just go, and then after something, after a repetition of this chord, suddenly it starts breaking off into a little noise. It goes and then from there, then it breaks into scales. Bum, 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 <laughs> etc. So, to me, what to me that one composition of Beethoven was such an eye opener. It gave me such perspective. He was showing me every possible thing that could be done, just with melody alone. Um, and th th basically, um, he, t he taught, I think this music, this composer was a revelation to many, many other composers and everything. Can mm. I say something about uh, Jim starting to become a composer? Mm -hmm. He told me many years ago that his mother used to take him to the symphony and he loved it. But he was also a piano student and a violin student. But, and his mother was really pushing him to be a, a, a practicing, a performing musician. But he said that when he went to the symphony, he wanted to see how the music was being put together. And that's when he decided that he was going to be a composer rather than a performing musician. Yeah. So um, now, Jim, you're probably is the most, uh, uh, let me think. How old is William Craft? I think William Craft is similar your age. Yeah. So, 
So you were born 1928, so puts you into 92 years old now. So, um, so you you've witnessed so many different uh, decades of art changing, and or or you witnessed so many different turmoils, um, you know, around the world, and so. Yet, when I listen to your music, your music is such sunshine, so beautiful. And um, so tell me a little bit about your, in general, do you have a, a style to, 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 to name your music? To me, to me, it's very romantic and then it's very toneful, almost like, uh, you know, almost... Almost like a um, music is like can can be used in many different things, you know, even in film or theater or on stage. So tell me a little bit. Tell us a little bit about your musical style in general. Do you have like one style, or it evolves during the years? I think it was a slow evolution, and the people who taught me in the slow evolution were all of the other composers. I, I learned, I learned the, the development of material from Beethoven. When it came to um, color, I learned an awful lot by listening to Rimsky-Korsakov. Um, so basically, it's not a question of looking for a particular style or lo or looking for a particular tool. I believe that I have learned from so many other composers. Um, I was saying something about Rimsky-Korsakov and people will say, oh, well, he's probably talking just about the colors, but no. Rimsky-Korsakov was also a, a scholar. He was a member of the Russian Navy. And in, in, in the Russian Navy, they stopped at many different ports. So he heard from people in various countries, various styles. So with Rimsky-Korsakov, you have both a storyteller and a colorist with a work like Scheherazade, which is based on the, the legend of the Thousand and One Nights and everything. So in his own way, he was both a colorist and a storyteller and, and all of these all of these things coming together. Mm -hmm. I can also, may I add something now? Yeah, please do. You, you asked about <clears throat> how you can characterize Jim's music. Jim told me a long time ago, because I have the exact same feeling that you did, it, his music is so beautiful and so melodic and accessible. And I asked him, how come he writes like this? And he told me that his feeling is that music is language. And most people, most audiences, want to hear a language that they can understand. And what some of the serialism and minimalism that came uh, was just not his cup of tea. He preferred to remain in the style that he knew that he could communicate with his audiences. Yeah, beautifully said. So let's uh, listen to, we're talking about viola piece. Let's. <clears throat> Here, this viola piece. This is, I believe, is the third movement mm -hmm. of the viola sonata. Would you like to uh, tell us a little bit about before we uh, uh, listen to a, a clip of it? We're, the viola sonata, the sonata for viola and piano. Right. Yeah. The third movement. Uh, I'm just trying to. It was in, it was um, commissioned by. Um, uh, Saul Breitzer. Saul Breitzer was the principal violist of the New York Philharmonic. And I, I knew the family 
the the essential thing about the, the, the viola itself, without the viola, you wouldn't, you would not have had evolving from the viola alone, all of the other instruments yes. of the violin family. You said that, honey. Yeah. Why don't you talk about that? Um, it was premiered. It was not premiered by uh, by uh, Mr. No, Wrights or he, he was he was. He passed away before it was done. Yeah, but it was premiered by a uh, Jean Mallow, who was the granddaughter of the world-renowned violist um, um, Lily Lillian Fuchs. Mm -hmm. My mother was a friend of the family Joseph and Lillian Fuchs, mm. and um, brilliant, brilliant violist. Yeah. Yes, a composer. Yes. Yeah, and. Um, I knew the family Wonderful. very, very well. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the essential thing, basically, I, I could talk about the entire violin family and everything, but the, the essential thing is that every performer stumbles into or eventually marrying the the instrument which he finally um, specializes in. Now, I'm just thinking about um, this piece was recorded by uh, Amadi. Amadi Azikawi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what you're going to hear? Yeah, he's my Facebook friend. Yeah. Oh, is Amadi. he? Uh huh. I told him we're meeting today, so hopefully he'll watch it. Um, mm -hmm. But um, let's uh, listen to it now. away. Bravo! Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that was a really lot of fun. Um, fast. And, and he did a really great job. 
the the mm. performer, right? He's a wonderful mm. musician. Yes. Yeah. I also saw uh, him playing this very movement. Uh, he on um, a live performance he played, and uh, yeah. So I sort of saved that. He uh, loves this piece, Ching. Yeah. And uh, he plays it all the time. Whenever he can perform, he plays it. Mm. And uh, of interest, we found out that um, that Amadi mm -hmm. was a a kind of a protege of Sal Greitzer, for whom the piece was written. Oh, yeah. He was a young student, and uh, Sal Greitzer and his wife Shirley Greitzer had a, um, a a festival, a music festival in Waterloo. Uh, was it Connecticut or Iowa? Oh, I'm, I'm, I don't think so. Maybe in New Jersey. Oh, you're right. And um, uh, Amadi was the youngest student ever to uh, be uh, uh, taken at the festival. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So now, uh, Jim, do you play piano? Like, do you have a like a main instrument you play? Well, I, I took piano lessons mm -hmm. very early in my life because that was the thing. My, my mother wanted to make sure that I had lessons and the piano was the thing. And of course, we, there was a piano in our house and so mm -hmm. forth. Um, but the piano in itself as an instrument has such versatility. It has this enormous compass with very, very low notes and go all up to very high notes and so forth. And of course, there are so many wonderful concertos written for the instrument. And um, but you were never performing. I, I, but I was not a performer on the instrument. Mm. But I appreciated listening to the performances of various pianists gave me such an appreciation an understanding of how to write for the instrument and mm -hmm. that that is yeah very very important now uh i assume long time ago uh composers write music with a pen with the staffs um so how do you deal with this new uh, technology now? Uh, later on, you know, there's software for writing music or notate music. Do you like the change or do you keep the old ways? Well, for, for until commu computers really came in, I was working in the traditional manner of, of, of pen or pencil on music paper, and so did Beethoven. Now Beethoven lived in an upstairs apartment in Vienna, and it had Venetian blinds. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, he was he was still wanted to write, but he mm -hmm. ran out of paper. But he still wanted to write something down. So he continued to write melodies on the slats in the Venetian blinds. <laughs> that, this is of course BC, which means before computers. <laughs> yeah. And and what about a computer? Like are you um are you glad? the invention of the computer uh, that uh, it, it helps the productivity of writing or or you still prefer, you know, the old ways? Well, I appreciate how serviceable the computers are, but basically I am pr pretty much uh, for practical purposes, pencil and paper, uh, Thing. Okay. It, 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 what, when, when I need to, we have the software and 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 the the accessories and everything, and I I will 
be good, very glad to use them and so forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, in terms of uh, um, like, like, for instance, uh, when you write something, do you say if someone commissioning you write, right? There's two, I guess there's either you write for yourself or someone uh, commi- commissioning you write. Now, do you have a favorite instrument? You like to write for, or, um, or doesn't have to be one instrument. It could be a symphonic. Do you prefer to write symphony or chamber music, or opera, or do you have any preference, or you just like all of them? I like all of them. I like all. Um, years ago, I wrote an opera, and it was based on. Um, and the pieces, um, well, no, 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 no. Let me let me um, say that at that time, Orson Welles was uh, popular, and he had dramas on on radio and, and so forth. And a piece of fiction was uh, created uh, from uh, supposed to be a, a fictional broadcast about what's going on about it. A city which was in danger of imminent invasion from somebody coming in from another country. The 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 name of the drama was the fall of the city. And I created an opera based on that. And um, that's the one that won the award, the uh, Ohio University Award. Wonderful, mm-hmm. wonderful. So, um, shall we listen to another clip of your music? Um, mm-hmm. Let's see. First of all, um, let me go into your playlist. All right. So, how about shall we listen to miniature miniatures for mini- orchestra? Yes. All boogie? Right, sure. The, the, the second one? The boogie? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So let me go in there. the boogie.
beautiful. Very, very, very beautiful. Um, so this is um kind of jazzy, boogie, <laughs> right? I hear lots of uh, jazz in your music. So tell us a little bit about that influence. Um, you you know you must uh, witness the 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 history of jazz, right? It starts like what <laughs> early twenties, twentieth, and then you know thirties, forties, and so um, tell us a little bit about your exposure of the jazz music. Well, jazz did actually began much earlier. Yeah, like in New Orleans, eighties. Yeah, and eighteen nineties in New Orleans. Yeah. What happened? What happened is that there were many. Musicians available there, but there were also funerals. And what happened is that the musicians were in their own particular um, situation. They had to make a living not by playing a musical instrument, but working as a tailor. Or working in, in some other profession and everything, but there were funerals, and the cemeteries were all outside of the city. So the people needed to have music to walk to the cemetery, and then walking back from the cemetery. So what evolved were the musicians playing slow lyrical music, taking the, the the townspeople to the cemeteries, and then to, to cheer them up after the heartrending ceremonies, to cheer them up on the way back. So they had a completely different kind of music for the walk back mm. to the city. Yeah, and that was basically. One of the things calling uh, calling for the evolution of the musical form that we call now as jazz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I um, I just truly believe um, young people should be exposed with jazz more. Um, you know, jazz club you don't see that many young people. Um, it's a pity, right? So the jazz music, in a way, like classical music, people say, oh, classical music is dying. And then we can also say jazz music is dying, you know, just because I teach actual music appreciation in a college for 16 years. Um, and lots of them, they don't know what jazz is about. You know, those are college students, non-music major college students. So I squeeze three hours of jazz history to them and and they're just in the end they they just loved it you know compared to listen to <laughs> mozart you know they prefer jazz um now uh i wanted to thank some of our uh guests who made a comment here and we have all together 35 people watching us at this minute it's just a remarkable thank you so much eileen for your um um, your uh, friends and your uh, promotion to oh, your Jim, friends. Jim's groupies. <laughs> Jim's groupies, yeah, fans. So, um, Nicole, thank you so much. Nicole, my friend, she's an actor, actress and film director. Uh, she loved our opening, your opening music. She thinks it's dramatic opening. And then we have Flora T. Vassal, V-A-S-S-A-L-L. -S -S mm. So this is just wonderful. I'm happy to see you and Eileen. You both uh, look absolutely great. <laughs> I am so enjoying this. Much love. Kiss, 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 kiss. You know, I have to add something. Um, Eileen made my day yesterday. 
she, we were on the phone, you know, talk about logistic things. And she said, you know, I did my hair, you know, <laughs> Jim shaved his face. You know, we all look very pretty. <laughs> you are. <laughs> uh, and Flora said more congratulations, Jewel. This is really a fine presentation. Thank you so much. I'm Barry, M-O-L-I-N-E. Must be your friend. Everyone just look great. I'm so happy. Interesting story. So I want to hear more stories of Jim. Um, Nicole, um, Nicole said, I love getting a lesson on the string instruments. So I said, play the viola, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> One lesson? No, 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 Nicole. You have to have at least 12 lessons <laughs> before you can hold the instrument. Uh, then you have Jin, E-L-L-E-N, Ellen, mm -hmm. thank you for featuring James, James Cohen, a, a living legend of American com composition, indeed. My friend Ao said hello, Ao is Yangan, I'm a Yangan, Yangan, who is Yangan? Do you know what is Yangan, Eileen? No, I don't. Yangan, Yen is Y-A-N-G, Yen, Gan is like gangster, I'm a gangster. Um, Yang Yan is people who supports Andrew Yan. Andrew Yan was um, uh, oh. running for president for oh, the yes. Democrat. Yeah, so I'm a strong Yang Yan. So I is a Yang Yan. Nicole, beautiful. I see a whole film in in front of my eyes. Oh, so sweet. Nicole s sees us as a film. You know, she's a film director. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we have a Carol, Carol Nicodemi. It must be your friend said yes. hi. Yeah. And then uh, Flora said this, uh, this uh, G R E C I A N. What is that? Uh, DVD is one of my fa uh, favorite. Oh, the name of DVD, I guess it's called. Um, so let's see which one is it. Is that one? Let me see. I have like four of your CDs. Um, so um, yeah, he, they like your music. Um, Percy Brown, oh. wonderful interview with Jim. Carol said, "Wonderful to see you." And then Car another Carla, Carla Lancy, L A N C E L L O T T I, um, flutists. Um, yes. said hello i don't know this cd <laughs> yeah uh, jim jim has written his last three commissions have involved the flute oh and this last carla old yeah. commissioned a, concer a, a concerto and we could let her know right now mm -hmm. that it's almost finished carla and a, it is brilliant a concertino for yes. flute and string orchestra and wow. it's magnificent. Carla will be in touch. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Keener, K-E-E-N-E-R. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Cohen from the Tosa, S-A-I, <laughs> alumni chapter. <laughs> Tosa. Alpha Iota. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> what is that? S-A-I. It's, uh, uh, it's a, a women's fraternity. Oh, sorority. and she sorority. was initiated into it many okay. years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. and she said it is it is good to see and hear you both hear you today, and then there's more comment from Flor Flor. How do you say her name? Flora Balso. Yeah, Florette. yeah, yeah, yeah. Flora, Flora. Flora. absolutely lovely. You sure do know your jazz history <laughs> <laughs> and then carla returned your message right now i cannot wait to perform the flute concerto getting sneak sound bites and i'm in such gratitude oh. and then the carla say hey so excited <laughs> so thank you so much guys to um to make comments and if you have any questions just you know write it down so i will bring your question up okay all right, so let's, um, can we listen to another excerpt? Yes. Okay, let me go in there to find. I am looking for, okay, so let's see. Oh, how about, um, how about the, uh, 
the piece with the um, clarinet solo. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let me find it first. Let me find it first. Okay, so I am going to now find our, make sure we have audio. Okay, so Jim, would you like to talk about this piece before we listen to it, please? This is the clarinet concerto yeah. that you wrote for Christopher Jefferson. Yes. Um, in this case, I could do all kinds of description, but I think the best thing is to allow the music to speak for itself. Okay. Okay, but Ching, I can tell you about the piece. Just a little bit background, like when was this written okay. and stuff like that. This um, we're playing third movement, okay. Yeah, the uh, a clarinetist who was principal of the Bogota, Colombia um, Symphony Orchestra heard Jim's first clarinet concerto, which was commissioned and recorded by a world famous young clarinetist John Manassi. And uh, Chris Jefferson loved the piece so much that he asked Jim to uh, write a, a concerto for him, which he premiered in Bogota. And um, because he loved the piece so much and Jim wrote for him, he thought that because uh, Chris was in a Latin American country, he would structure the last movement in a, um, a Latin American fashion. And there is a traditional dance called a cumbia, C-U-M-B-I-A. So you'll hear that in that movement. Mm. And um, John Manassi recorded the second concerto. So this is his work too. Okay. Thank you. 
Bravo! Okay, let's take this off, giving you back sound. That was lovely. I was like visualizing, almost feel like a, 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 this can be uh, scored for ballet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about this orchestra. It sounds really good. Do you remember? This was the. This is Bokita. Uh, no, honey. Yep. This this was the um in in Latvia. Oh oh. Yeah. When we wanted when we wanted to record in Europe. Yeah. I had no idea in advance what the orchestras there sounded like. Mm. So I listened to. I think portions of the string sections of various orchestras. And I thought that the smoothest and most eloquent performances of string sections of every, various orchestras, mm -hmm. one was Riga and Latvia. And then there was another one in Bratislava. Mm -hmm. And we recorded in both places. Oh. And the musicians there took to my music like a duck to water. Um, the the one, one lady, a, a string player in, in mm -hmm. Bratislava said, Mr. Cohen, I love your music. It touches the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in Riga, Latvia, there were people also with the same degree of enthusiasm. Yeah. I think part of it was that they enjoyed the idea. They, they all they all loved their own repertory. But to have a new piece of repertory coming in, which they could think of as being on the same level as the, as the older material, I think it touched them very, very much. Yeah, I appreciate the um, this the orchestra sound and uh, also the clarinet. Clarinet is uh, remarkable. Well, he is world renowned. This young man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sounding wonderful. Yes. So. Um, all right, we we still have a little bit of time left, and I want to thank um, Jim and thank Eileen um, to talk with me today. And I also wanted to thank all your guests and our guests um, um, making comments. and uh, And please, um, please, if you if you can, uh, consider subscribe Jewel Media uh, YouTube channel, and I work. Uh, really hard to reach. Um, I have a subscription actually forty six hundred. Uh, it's not bad, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to. Uh, um, so please subscribe me more, and then you get the, you know notification. You can also like click on the bell. There's a bell somewhere. Um, then when we have new videos or new talks, I do this talk actually every um, almost every Wednesday almost every Wednesday since March 27th. So, and also sometimes I, I would interview people on uh, the different days or emergency situation. I will also hold um, interviews or talks or conversations. So Jim, you are my number 63 episode today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done 63 times. Um, Congratulations. So, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. So um, now, Let's talk about, oh, Jim, do you have any like stories you want to, someone says you have great stories. You want to tell uh, me a story, tell us a story without me asking you what? <laughs> any, you must have hundreds of stories to tell. Well, the one that we were going to tell you and that Jim yeah. can tell you yeah. is about the miniatures. Um, and honey, it was you know, for, for, uh, for Marilla Jonas Marilla, Marilla. and then the whole story about Marilla. Okay. Is that the boogie miniature? The boogie. The, the boogie, yeah. boogie movement. From the oh, okay. Movement. So there's a story there behind it? Okay. Yes. Beautiful story. Okay. Incredible Please. Incredible story. Please. Marilla Jonas was a concert pianist 
in Europe. And um, I, and the country... She was in Poland. Oh, she was Polish. Yes. And it was in Poland at the time when the Germans were very much in control of things over there. And they, they managed to leave. And well, unfortunately, she lost her husband. Yeah. Uh, they, they were uh, targeting all the Jewish people. Yes. And they t the husband was killed, and they took her to the concentration camp. And here you come from. Do you remember that? That part? Okay. I'm, a, I'm, I'm trying to remember this was... Okay. I, I know... Uh, no, 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 wait a minute. There is now... In the concentration camp, there were officers. And they knew who was who was whom, who was coming in there, and so forth. Mm. One of the officers... He pointed out to another officer, bring that woman into my office. I wish to interrogate her. Mm. So, they brought, the officer brought Marilla Jones in there. Mm. And the, then the officer said to the orderly, now I wish to interrogate her privately. So the, that officer left the room and he said, I know who you are. I happen to love music. I want you to pay attention to everything that happens to you. Hmm. And if it occurred, if a, a thought occurs to you that you think might be very important, I encourage you to act upon it. Well, what happened is that like a number of other prisoners, they were set out sent out on work details every once in a while with a hoe or a shovel and everything to take up to dig up the vegetables or what have you and so forth and one day she was on a, such a detail with, with, with a hoe or what have you and she suddenly realized it was very quiet around her and she looked around and all of the other people had disappeared. And she looked up in the direction of the guard towers, and there did not seem to be anybody looking out of the windows. So she very quietly and very slowly put down her utensil, and she started walking away from it, and nobody stopped her. Hmm. And she slept at night in, in, in the fields and everything. Mm. She made her way over to a, a, a seaport in Europe. Wow. And, and, and um, she was able to get... To, to, she, to, she was able to get a cable sent to a, to, a, to a sister who lived in, in Brazil. In Brazil. Mm -hmm. wow. And uh, she was able to get to Brazil and um, she started, she did not want to play the piano any longer because her husband had been killed in the, uh, in the concentration camp. And so she didn't want any part of music but her sister kept working on her and begging her. And so she started uh, concertizing a little bit, but then Otto Rubinstein came to uh, the capital city. She, and they, have, they were both from the same country. And Rubinstein 
tried to encourage her. And at that particular point, um, she was still reluctant and everything. And he realized at one point, he said, look, look dear, um, I, uh, I want you to, there will be a performance uh, next Thursday evening and everything. And I don't know the instruments there and everything. I, I want to hear how it sounds in various parts of the auditorium and everything. Would you come with me and, and sit over there and... Um, Sound check. He said, try, <laughs> Sound try, check. Try, try, <laughs> right. try some of this over here. Yes, uh -huh. now try something over there. And he said, um, look, I know how it sounds. I want to hear how it sounds with sound coming from the a stage. Would you just play a few notes on the piano for me while I go up into the auditorium? Mm. And she started playing notes and then she started improvising and then she started playing music for memory and so forth and so forth. Uh, at one point she looked up and he had vanished and people were coming into the auditorium to take their seats and everything. Mm -hmm. And she realized what had happened mm -hmm. and she, she understood from that and she started to practice and concertize again. Wow. And then wow. she came, Arthur Rubinstein asked her to please come to New York, mm -hmm. and she did. Mm. And do you want to tell that part when she went to Carnegie Hall? The only, the only uh, concert that she could get for a good price was. You tell, you tell the story, girl. <laughs> the only she didn't she had limited amount of money, mm. and the only concert that she could get oh. was. <laughs> a handful of people, I was with five or six people in the auditorium on a Saturday, on afternoon. A Saturday afternoon, a, a few music uh, lovers and a gentleman who happened to be a cub reporter for the New York Times. Wow. And he said, wow. <laughs> and um, from that point on, he talked to people who talked to people and everything. And she got a, a contract from one of the uh, major um, uh, record companies. Wow. Yeah, I think it was wow. RCA, if I'm not mistaken. Well, one of the record companies. Yeah. And from that point on, she had a career again. Unfortunately, uh, oh, and she married uh, a doctor, uh, both also from Poland, and he had come to this country. Mm -hmm. And the doctor happened to have been Jim's doctor. Wow. And Dr. Ernest G. Abraham. Hmm. And wow. uh, he loved Jim's music. And he told Jim that uh, he would like to invite him to dinner so that he could meet, uh, so that Jim could meet his wife. And Jim came, and um, apparently, uh, Marilla Jonas, now Mrs. Abraham, said that uh, she, that many composers have created little pieces for her for, uh, as encore pieces. And- um, Miniatures. Miniature, well, yeah, little miniatures. And she asked him to write her one. And on the same of the nine miniatures that you have, Ching, one of them is the, um, the music box, which is like a little, uh, um, a little uh, concept uh, for her of uh, ho her homeland. And uh, she loved it so much that she asked him for more. And so mm -hmm. that's when Jim created the nine pieces, a set of nine miniatures. Set, a set of nine miniatures. Oh. And the reason, and it was for piano only, oh. but then so many people heard these pieces and loved them so much that they asked him to orchestrate them. Oh. And the orchestration has been performed many, many times by many orchestras. I see. So that was the story of the miniatures. So the miniatures, is there? are they on YouTube? The, the piano ones? The I'm sure they are. Huh? I'm sure they are. Oh, miniatures. I, I see miniatures for orchestra. 
but it uh, was on a piano yeah. album oh. recorded by a wonderful, wonderful Argentinian composer, oh. Mir- um, a performer, I'm sorry, Miriam uh, Conti. Miriam Conti? Oh, yeah, okay. Miriam Conti. And she uh, performed um, Jim's uh, a whole, a whole, a whole CD of piano music. And the last piece on that album is um, the piano concerto, the first piano concerto. Now the the miniature starts with a, with the Sunrise. title "Sunrise," I see. and at the end is called "Sunset." And uh-huh. the difference is because "Sunset" is the same thing spelled backwards. The beginning is. At the end, it, it begins. So it's it's the same thing. Backwards, backwards. Yeah, and that album is called Muskrats and and Butterflies. Oh. I'm and trying. I'm sure it's on YouTube. Mm. And if if it's not, then we will certainly oh. see if we can um, get it done. I can only I can only find the miniatures for orchestra right now. You know, so so you said that number nine, uh, number nine sun. Oh yeah, number one is sunrise. Number nine is sunset. I can That's see right. it. Yeah, shall I play a little bit? We'd love it. Okay. All right. Hold on one second. Let me get it. Correctly. All right, go back to here at this. Um, so here we go. So this is the miniature for orchestra version, uh, the ninth ninth section, ninth movement called Sunset. <laughs> Beautiful. <clears throat> okay, let's move this out. Of, yeah, great. Thank you so much. So, um, let's see who we are going to thank. Uh, let's see. A lot of people made comments. Um, M. Kosama. Hello, this is a Mahala. I had honor and the... Sorry. I muted you, sorry. Hello, this is Mahala. I had an honor and the pleasure of meet James and Elaine Cohen. I am so grateful. And then you have uh, Carol, Carol, uh, Nicole Demi. Et and I are both watching. And then Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy Baseball. You Really? Somebody's last name really is Baseball? 
from Central <laughs> <laughs> Central uh, Wisconsin, Sue and Jim. Yes, Jim. Very how you say that? S A C H S. Sax. Sax. Enjoy. Is is he a musician? No, they're okay. not. But they love Jim okay. and they love his music. And and me and we love them too. Yeah, Sue and Jim Sachs enjoying this so much. And Jim Cohen says, "Hi, I am. Hi, Jim and Elaine. This is the other Jim Cohen in New York." That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jim. <laughs> Great to see you both. Wonderful conversation. And then M、uh, Kosama said, "I am so grateful that." I was invited to watch this event. Thank you so much, guys, for joining.、Um, um, beautiful clarinet piece, Carol said. And then、um, Kosama said, "Wonderful to see you both, Mr. and Mrs. Cohen." I may add that、uh, Mr. Cohen is using the computer software in composing the music as well, <laughs> as the only ways. <laughs> as well as only <laughs> with <laughs> congratulations to all the successful event for this event. Okay, then we have Thomas, P I E R C Y. Great to see you, Jim and Eileen. And then we have、uh, Kosama said,、uh, "I meant that he is mastering both computer." <laughs> Based composing as well as the traditional old way using pen and paper, and I、mm-hmm. saw that firsthand when I had the privilege of being invited to their home. <laughs> so、um, Al said,、um, "James doesn't look ninety-two; he seems younger." <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> so、um, we have one.、Uh, we are actually. Yeah, we're actually almost time, but I want—I don't want to miss another piece we're supposed to play,、um, which is、um, the symphony, the eighth symphony, the, the third movement. You told us. Yeah, third movement. Telephone. Yeah, we'll get that. Okay.、Uh, let me find the music. Get it off here, Carly. Get it off here. Third, so, so I'm just trying to find the movements here. Okay, so、um, eleven forty, eleven forty. Okay. All right.、Uh, are we ready? Yes. Okay.、Um, that must be your landline, I guess. Um, yeah, it's it's finished. It, it、okay. won't do it anymore. Okay. All right. So we're going to listen to one more piece. This is James Symphony Number、no. Eight, Third Movement.、Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm gonna mute you in case you have another phone call coming. Thank、you 
That's the excerpts of the symphony number no. eight, third movement. Beautiful, very um, beautiful, beautiful, very, very uplifting, and uh, also the orchestra sounds are also really good, right? I mean, they did a really great job, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, so we can talk forever. Um, it's uh, <laughs> it's overtime. So um. <laughs> It's been a really pleasure. Do you have anything you want to say? Anything we we didn't um, we missed it, Jim? No, I am very pleased with everything that you have Thank you. already done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so time. much. I would love to meet you in person sometime when this crazy, you know, um, COVID is over. So many concerts have been canceled. Yeah. because of this event we can't wait to hear you perform <laughs> and hopefully you'll you'll perform the viola sonata also i know that you like it i would love to yeah i would love to um i also sent your music to my son's teacher my son is a is a violist at julia school i sent it to my son's teacher Car carol rodland about oh about your music and uh so she is teaching today right now but she says she's gonna watching us later and oh, uh yeah she's very appreciative that's uh, lovely yeah a uh, composer's right for viola and she's a champion also uh for you know promoting uh living composers that's very nice thank yeah. you yeah you're very Good. welcome so i'm sure my son would love your work too so well, thank you and thank you and you keep safe and keep being young and healthy <laughs> and <laughs> and thank you our audience for joining us. Um, it's a it's a great um, turnout and I really appreciate all of you. And uh, so until next time and and uh, so long. Thank you, Ching. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Yes.